Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Motoshop. I'm your host, Sam Barber, and with us we have McKay Hawks, the what? most dimensional man about town I've ever met. He's going to talk three-dimensional. He's got all three of them, yes. the X, the Ys, and the Zs. Once McKay, again, you're going to get sick of me. I you're may right not ever get sick of you, <laughs> McKay. What, what are we talking about today? Uh, today, I'm going to go over weave patterns. Weave patterns. I, I once got a, a weave pattern. It did wonders for my social life. Nice. Uh, yeah, Mom's still not talking about that. Not that kind of Not that kind of weave. We're going to be talking no, about what kind of weave. Be, we're going to be emulating a weave, like a weave for a fabric. If you get really close, you get thread patterns in there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see uh, weave patterns in uh, metal. You see it in cloth. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a pain to, to model to all of To try to model these. that, there's no way. And, and you have over and under characteristics in it. So how do you emulate How would that? you even do that? So, yeah. gonna so you're going to unlock the secrets of uh, weaving for us. Yeah, I'm going to show yeah. you how to do that. You're like, like you're like an old-fashioned woman that quilts, and you're going to sit us down, exactly. and you're going to show us how to build it. Except we're going to be making chain, not, oh. not quilts. Well, that's, that's much more masculine. It's much more exactly. your style. Okay, cool. let's do that. Let's, let's, let's dive right into the weave. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually open up a sample here of something that I already did. Okay. It's actually not completely done yet, but it kind of gets the point. Okay. I have this uh, grill here. Um, oh. This is like a speaker, right? Yeah. And in the front of a speaker, you have a grill. Right. And what if you were going to do a macro flyby on that? You wanted to get really close and yeah, see all really the close. ins and outs exactly. of, the, of the weave of the metal. So if I zoom way in on this, you can get interactive feedback yeah. here. Okay. See that grill? Yeah, we've got lots of detail there. Yeah. I actually have some images here. Okay. I can show oh, you. please. So, oh, nice. Very yeah. nice. All right. And look that, how close I get. Wow. Now you're saying that you're not modeling this, though. That's not modeled. It's actually emulated in, in metal. Okay, so, so let's get, let's see how we how one shall emulate. Cool. Uh, let's open up. So this we're in the here. speakers. Okay. All right. Actually, I'm gonna make a new scene. I'll start. Hold. From let's start from scratch. Yeah, it's actually a pretty easy process. Okay. All right. So again, I'll start with my famous little floor plane right there. The famous floor plane, the world-renowned floor plane of McKay. All right. I'll make a material. Uh huh. And we'll call it. Uh, what? Uh, let's call it a uh, weave plan. Weave. Weave plan? Yes, it's All a floor right. plan with a weave. It's that's, a weave plan. That sounds excellent. All right. All right, so now we have our material in our shader tree. Uh huh. So I'm going to go to, again, I'll go to my render. Oops, didn't mean to do no, that. I don't want to do that. Go to my render tab. Oh. And so this way we'll be able to get interactive so, feedback yeah. here. So when we make changes, we're going to see it we're in real see time. It in real time, right here. Uh, so Where basically, what I'm going to want to do mm -hmm. is really difficult. Am, am I, this notes. is going to be yeah. uh, above my pay grade. Yeah, exactly. All right. Add layer, and you go to weave. <laughs> and you can see right there what it's doing. It's not necessarily what we it's want. It's not much of a weave. Not much of a weave. It does look kind of like the stockings of the Wicked Witch of the West, though. So maybe they should rename it. It does. <laughs> uh, where it says projection type here, uh -huh. you're not going to use a UV map here. I'm just going to use a planar projection and, and project down from the Y axis. And you see, boom. Ah, uh, so now it looks it. more like, okay. Yeah. And that's just changing the planar projection axis. Exactly. Okay. So you see now I have this nice detail there. Yeah, it looks that, great. That's basically a grayscale image. But it's flat. Uh, it? But it's generated on the fly. It's a procedural mm. rather than an image. Right. So, so if I go over... Uh, here, for example, I actually have a few features I can play around with, like yard, yarn. I call it yarn. Yarn. Yarn width. So if oh, I change so that. Oh, so the actual threads. Okay. Yeah, you see what that does. Yeah, that's uh, that's handy. So you can make it fine or. Thick oh, so you can make it like a chain link uh, fence or something with exactly. this. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, nice. Nice. Oh, okay. I'm starting to yeah. wake up to the weave. It's to the potential. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're unlocking my weave potential. So we'll just go with like 50%. That looks good. I like okay. that. Okay. And next thing we're going to want to do, let's go ahead again and I want to make this. I like to make metals. Do you? So I'm going to make another Yeah. So. Kind of a Mad Max <laughs> thing going on here. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to make this very reflective again. Well, it. it metal shows it off really well. Right. So that's what Metal I'm gonna looks do. cool. It looks cool. And if I create a scene, can't argue with that. All right, a, so okay. a double click here, and it, that creates. Now I have a. Now we've got a little world here. A little world, so it actually, house. it'll reflect something, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, now what I want to do is actually take that grayscale value and apply it to kind of a bump or a displacement, 
Um, depending on your memory uh, limitations, I prefer to use a displacement if you can. Mm -hmm. but displacements are really heavy on memory usage, but but you get a better effect on the edges. You get a better effect, absolutely, absolutely on the edges. You're absolutely yeah, right. I'm keeping up. Yeah, it's so bad. Now, but quick, real quick. Uh, so with a bump map, uh, it would look good head on. You would it would look three dimensional head on. But but if you were ever get to the edge of the item it would look flat, right? Exactly. It, okay. it, it's an emulated, it's not a true displacement. So when, it's just when you get displacement, it's actually displacing that geometry with two true polygons. Versus just displacing the normal. Exactly. Which is what the, with the, bump, map what the bump map is doing. Yeah. Okay, so in this instance, we're going to use the displacement map. Yep. Because we have memory to share. Yeah, exactly. We have fond so memories I'm going to have to find to this, share. find this as, see what I did there? So, okay, go, go back over right, there right, one more time. Right click on there, uh -huh. and I'll define it as displacement. As a displacement. And as then the I, effect. Exactly. Okay. And then you can see, well, that kind of starts to come together. Right. First of all, I'm going to crank down here on my material below here. I'm going to crank my displacement distance up to like 50 millimeters so we can really see what's going oh, on. Oh, now that's really. It's really popping up out of yeah. there. Yeah. Right? And uh, but it's still not transparent there. So right, and underneath the weave, we still have a layer of, of polygons there. Exactly. So if I create an instance of this, mm -hmm. so that's actually just a it's a kind of a copy of it. Whatever I what with an instance, if I change any parameters here, it's also going to apply basically. Okay. Here, right? right. So it's not an individual uh, item. Yeah, but you can change certain things, <clears throat> but not everything, like okay. the invert and you know. So. so why did we create an instance for for this? Thing? Because we need to assign this to be a stencil. A stencil. That doesn't look right. Mm, that looks kind of creepy. But you can kind of see what it's doing. I can see that it's 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 cut out all of our it's weave, cut out everything and it's left stuff. everything we don't want. Exactly. So now we just need to inverse. Ah, so the old invert button. Invert. Sometimes I want an invert button on my life. Oh, cut out everything I don't want. That would be nice. <laughs> all right. So so now we've inverted it. It's taken the image, uh, the procedural image created of the weave, mm -hmm. and it's using that as kind of an alpha yeah. map. So it's saying yes, show this. No, don't show this. Exactly. Okay. And a stencil, a stencil is a form of alpha, except it doesn't hold on to, it doesn't dis display grayscale values. Okay. It's either on or off. So in a uh, typical 3D uh, modeling program with an alpha map, you're going to be supporting grayscale. You're going to be supporting. Yeah. So you all, can, So it's a, it kind of uh, revs up to white from black and, and exactly. You can grayscale. You could go to transparent over you know mm -hmm. over series of shades. But for this, this we just, just want yes or no. Yes or no. On it's or a on. digital idea. Exactly. It's very digital. Right. So and you can see basically it starts to come together. Yeah, it's that, starting to look that, like uh, that over like and weave. And actually, what I'm going to do really quick to uh -huh. show you, um, I'm going to change the size of this. Uh, by you go to the texture locator here where it says 317 millimeters. Right. I'm just going to reduce it down just to some arbitrary number here. And you can see now we have Oh, I see. Detail. So now we've got a much smaller weave right. over so the same area. Over the same area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see in that. Let me turn this off really quick. So All right. The and then if I go, just really to yep. show you, if I go under noise, and I'm going to do a noise fall off and kind of move this. And now what is that doing? Tab it. I'm just kind of creating some curve to the texture. Okay. So just give plane. it a little bit of a I I asymmetry, a little irregularity. Exactly. And then you can see, you know, you got this three-dimensional texture on top of a three-dimensional map, so you can get, you can see how wow. you can get like a chain mail. Or yeah, a yeah, or and it's like kind of that. bending in with the with the landscape. And I have a render here of what this actually. Oh, looks great. Like. Let's take so, a look. See. Brilliant. Boy, that is nice. And here's a few renders again. Yeah, and that was so easy. It was like uh, it was just like, three like clicks. that. It was great. That's great. So. Wow. Well, thank you very much, McKay. And if you want to get your weave on, then you want to get into Moto. So I'm Sam Barber. Thank you very much for joining us on Moto Shop.